Rivals.com and VirginiaPreps.com's Matthew Hatfield with Cox Head football coach Bill Stachelski here on the announcement of his four-star defensive end Jordan Williams, who has picked the Clemson Tigers. So when you got pretty emotional today, tell us why. Just uh, the four years that we've spent together, uh, and um, you know, just he, uh, he and I have had a great relationship our entire career together, and uh, to see him make such a big, you know, career choice. Um, both, you know, educationally and athletically, really kind of, you know, I didn't really prepare myself well for it, but uh, just, it, they were tears of joy, let's put it that way, and uh, I just uh, really appreciate what he's done for our program, what he's done for the school, and, um, you know, I, I just couldn't be happier for him and his family. He chooses Clemson over a long list of suitors. He narrowed it down to the Tigers, uh, Virginia Tech, Virginia, and Tennessee. Here's what the Clemson fans want to know. What are they getting in him as a football player? They're getting a great person, first of all, and uh, I know that their coaching staff uh, down there know that, and just about every coach that came through and recruited Jordan knows that, um, and, and, and that's what, if you're going to have a successful football football team, you got to build it with personnel and good people, and uh, they're getting a quality person, comes from a great family, he's got a work ethic, he's mature, uh, of course he's athletically gifted, uh, but he's smart. And he's a team player. He's loyal, and um, you know there are a whole bunch of other adjectives I could tell you about Jordan, but uh, they're getting the full package. Mm -hmm. I know we've talked in the past about him. He was coming to your program, a very intriguing young man, as a guy that played basketball as well as you guys were wondering what position is he—a wide receiver, tight end, defensive end, offensive lineman? And he's played both lines of scrimmage very well for you guys. Um, and you talked about he could be a DN, rush the quarterback, D tackle inside if you need to to stop the run. The thing that stands out to me is the game he had last year against Bates. I really, he really, I think, had his coming out party. Did you guys sense then that he was taking it up to a different level? Yeah, that night was a special night because he just, uh, I mean, he couldn't be blocked. And that's when I think his potential was, was mm -hmm. kind of uh, noted. Um, not only obviously by us, by, but, but by anyone that was at that game or saw the film. And, um, and I think there's a lot more beyond that, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. And like you said, he could be, we brought him out the passing league this year and he caught balls as a tight end. He's got good hands. He's obviously tall, he's athletic. Um, I think Jordan's, you know, he can do just about anything. Mm -hmm. Now, moving to where he is in the SEC at a program like Clemson, He's going to be going up against the best. Or so, ACC, right? Really. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, ACC. He's going to be going up against the best, and um, I think he's got it in him. I mean, um, he's going to get comfortable with the program they're running down there, and um, I, I think they have a plan for him, um, and uh, they have a fantastic defensive coordinator and Coach Venables, and I know that uh, Jordan's going to fit in one way or the other. Well, they're going to see SEC teams as they did last year in Alabama if they That's keep right. playing like they have That's under right. Coach Sweeney in these big bowl games. Uh, I think the thing that stands out to me about him is just his uncanny knack to bat balls in the line of scrimmage. I see guys like Calais Campbell with the Cardinals and the NFL do it. At his size, he's got a real a gift for doing that, which a lot of defensive ends don't necessarily have. Oh, yeah. he. Uh, I think he had a couple, two, three bat downs. And not only did he bat it down, but he either caught it or picked it up. And, uh, and, and I think he scored on a couple of them. But, yeah, that's the kind of athleticism that they see. And those couple highlights might be what guarded all his offers, to be honest with you. But uh, he's far more than just that. He, uh, he can play the run pretty tough. Like, like you said, he, play, he had played inside before. Mm -hmm. He's played, obviously, on the edge. And hopefully we can move him around a little bit if we get um, a little bit um, you know, uh, in-depth with what we're doing. Um, but yeah, Jordan, he, he's the full package. But like I said, the biggest thing about Jordan Williams is the fact that he's a quality kid and uh, he's a good person and he's going to give you everything he has every every rep. Last two for you, uh, one on Jordan, one on the team. Caught up with him about a month ago and the thing that stuck out to me was, our final question for him was, thought of the season, and he named off about eight or nine guys. It seems in this day and age where everybody's looking for instant gratification, he does it here at the school. He picks a school that's different from a lot of people. Clemson hasn't had guys since maybe Taj Boyd from here, 09. Yep. Um, he didn't go to a different high school. Correct. Is it just his loyalty and passion for his teammates and where he's at that separates him from some guys, you think? I think it was his upbringing. I think uh, his dad's uh, been a close friend of the program since he came in as a freshman. Um, you know, um, his parents are terrific. You can tell that they did a great job raising him. And, um, yeah, the loyalty aspect is huge. Uh, the fact that his teammates can look him in the eye knowing that uh, he had opportunities to go to other schools, um, and he did. And, um, you know, that says a lot because there's a lot of four- and five-star athletes around this area that have jumped ship and gone somewhere else. Um, you know, I, I appreciate 
Jordan for what he did because he's setting an example for these guys to, to stay loyal to the program, to finish what you started, and I think college coaches see that too, you know. Final one, you guys have advanced in the playoffs each of the last two years. The Beach District might be more wide open than ever. Granted, you lose Cole Johnson as your quarterback to James Madison, but a lot of people are saying, watch out for the Cox Falcons as a team that could finish first in the Beach and go far. What's your response to that? Uh, I'd rather see us being picked eighth, like we <laughs> usually are every year, and um, play the underdog role. But, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Ocean Lakes is on top, Salem's on top. Um, Bayside's going to have a better program, and they're, they're going to give us a run for our money. And I know just seeing teams out in passing league, Tallwood's improved. Uh, First Colonial beat us last year. Um, every every week's a challenge. Anyone can beat anyone. Um, uh, but until we beat some teams that we haven't beaten in a while, you know, I, I, I got to say that we have a chance to challenge. And uh, if we can do what we what we think we can do from week to week and do more things right than the other team, then we might be there in the mix at the end, but we'll start thinking about Great Bridge next week and then Grassfield and then our first game against Tallwood. But, uh, you know, I appreciate the compliment, but I'd prefer if we were picked, you know, on the bottom half of the district. Well, hey, thank you for your time. We'll see you on Friday nights. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it.